All right, so it is just about time for us to get to the final match of the top half of the round one bracket, and that is going to be between Asian Republic and Popo Panda. First to the stage is Asian Republic from Brick, New Jersey. He calls Summoner's War a hobby. It makes it look like a sport. My name is Joshua Talmayan, and people know me as Asian Republic in Summoner's War. I'm 21 years old from Brick, New Jersey, and I'm a student. Most people know me for someone that eats food really fast. I mean, like, if you ever hang out with me, I'm gonna eat food real fast, and then, like, while you guys are talking and stuff, there's not gonna be any food left on my plate. <laughs> Video games is just a huge part of my life because it's just something that's always been a part of it. And it's like an escape for me from the real world, you know what I mean? Awkwardly enough, like, I dropped out as a bio major and I ended up going into computer science and I figured computer science would be good for me because A, I always play video games and I always play video games on the computer. So I just sort of figured that they just sort of put one and two together and now I'm a computer science major. And when Republic isn't busy playing Summoner's War, he likes to play a little bit of League of Legends and Hearthstone. He used to play Call of Duty as a kid. Who is he going to be facing? None other than Popo Panda 12 from Shanghai, China, and Louisville, Kentucky. There's an interesting combination. My name is Alan Hu. My in game name is Popo Panda 1 2. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Shanghai, China, and I'm a med student right now. I type faster than anyone I've ever met. I learned how to type when I was probably like six or seven years old when computers weren't even that big yet from playing this game called RuneScape. Like I'm sure people my age all played it. So you'd have to like run around the bank selling these items for money and you have to type the like what you're selling fast enough so everyone can see it because everyone's trying to sell stuff. And that's how I learned how to type when I was like six years old. 145-ish words per minute. Usually when I do typing stuff. And I've never met someone who type faster. Well, given his name is Panda, so it should be no surprise that Feng Yan is his favorite character. Oddly enough, though, for Panda, least favorite character, Ganymede. Hmm. But he says it's because he doesn't have one, and he's so OP for RTA. <laughs> so maybe that would explain it, because Gany Hathor combo, as we know, can be very effective. Absolutely. And just knowing that piece of information, that he does not have a Ganymede, that leaves Asian Republic wide open to leave that Ganymede pick for very last, unless Asian Republic doesn't have one himself. No. Well, time will tell as we are underway. Game one of the last of the top half of the round one matchups between Asian Republic and Panda and Childish. The draft is underway. Yes, it looks like Asian Republic got the first pick. He landed down Orion. Popo Panda answers back with the Wusa and Okeanos composition. And then, of course, we have Asian Republic in the second round of picks getting the Ciara and Kamun. Kamun, an interesting pick, one that we haven't seen just yet. Popo answers back with the Olivia Fenyan pick. We know we were going to bring out that Panda. And, of course, if the uh, Olivia having a decent defensive buff play, that's going to be a nice little combination if you can get it off. Oh, that's going to be great. But as you see, that is Ragdoll there at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Is he going to be banning that out? It looks like he is hovering over the ban, but given Asian Republic just a second to think of who he's going to ban, I would say either take out the Feng Yan or the Okeanos. Those are the two main concerns for, uh, for Asian Republic in this matchup here. Yeah, and for those that don't know, the Ragdoll Dark Dragon Knight, his passive is going to provide a 30% attack bar increase when they critically hit a unit. So that can generate a ton of turns for the opponent. Even if they get rid of the Orion, it can, that particular unit can really uh, generate a lot of turns for Age Republic's team. And just as suspected, both the Ragdoll and Feng Yan taken out for both players respectively. And it uh, looks like Popo Panda does get the first turn with Wusa. It's going into a combination with Okeanos able to reset the Sierra, which leaves it kind of in a bad situation, especially with that Rakan being able to potentially do some massive damage once it gets its collapse off. Yep, I like the choice here. Considering what Asian Republic has lined out, I feel like Ciara is the biggest threat. Um, Ritesh is a great monster for RTA, but unfortunately, the HP will decline over time, which his damage is based on max HP. Of course, it does provide a little sustainability alongside with Kamun, but yeah, Ciara is going to be the four, uh, first one for Popo Panda to work on. I like his strategy coming into this team. Was not able to remove the shield from Kamun on the Sierra, but still goes into the collapse either way. And you could see how important that shield from Kamun is on the Sierra. But as we saw, the Kamun was actually built violent, which you don't see very often just because the way his passive works, it doesn't really matter if it is violent or not. But nonetheless, 
comes the Okeanos with the triple man stun. The only one he missed was the Orion. And is he going to heal up from... He does not. He decides to use the third skill from Ritesh into a fully immune team with the exception of Okeanos. What do you think about that, Tyler? I, I'm curious to see why he did that considering there's so much immunity out there. Maybe he wanted to try to get a lucky defense break on Okeanos. But again, his damage is based on CR, right? The bombs, um, unless he was trying to get the Kamu to kind of follow through with the second skill doing damage uh, based on the uh, max HP. But of course, uh, the damage, the additional damage that he could have done would have helped out if Okeanos' uh, life is a little bit lower. It wasn't, as you can see right now, sitting at 70% health. Um, it looks like he's going to be able to turn it around. Okeanos putting the defense break back on Ciara. This is going to be nice. Popo Panda is going to have the opportunity to go ahead and land those big hits right on Ciara with that defense break. Now Olivia is up to do. Do we go ahead and try to provide a little glancing? Uh, yes, he tries, but unfortunately he does not land it here. The Soul Devourer is in. 15k on that one, taking it out. Nice play by Age Republic. That is what he was trying to do. He got the defense break in and he landed it. Great play. Now it is in favor of Age Republic. 4-3. to three. He's feeling pretty good there, Clay. Yeah, I think he's in a good position. That Kamun actually being a much bigger factor than a lot of people would have expected because that's not a unit that you see very often in high-level RTA, but this is the highest level that it gets, and we see it here today. And it's very, very crucial in Asian Republic's team, giving that Sierra so much sustainability, so much protection, and uh, letting it just kind of live another day. And there we go now. Now there comes the heal from Ritesh because he knew that he had that protection, didn't want to heal the Sierra over the Orion, which is probably why he didn't use it previously. So I actually think that's a very, very smart choice from Asian Republic now, because if he would have healed the Sierra the first time, that would have put Sierra's health over Orion. That means the shield would have instead now switched to Orion. Correct, correct. All right, it looks like the Kamun is back at it again, trying to work on that Wusa, not trying to deal with the Law of Elements, trying to work on that Fire Unit into the water. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to do a lot of damage, but it is all right. He still has control of the match here. Now Wusa is trying to get the two-turn sleep. I don't think, even though he lands it, I don't think it's going to make a crucial uh, change to it. His passive is going to still apply the shield to the lowest hit. Um, the collapse is in, but unfortunately, he does not land the provoke to keep CR focusing him down. Having CR locked down by uh, Rakan is really important, considering that Rakan has that, you know, 100% immunity there. So now it seems like uh, this is just uh, in favor of Asian Republic still. CR got a couple more hits in there. Got the additional turn. Can he finish the Wusa off? He wasn't able to do so. Um, let's see what he decides to do. He looks like he's trying to switch it over to Orion now, despite the fact that CR is really, really low there, Clay. Yeah, he put the damage on to Orion, but now we see the shield going up on Sierra. Gets the heal from Ritesh, which means the shield is now going to be starting to apply to Kamun. But here we go. Is he going to keep the collapse? There's no reason to keep the collapse because then it'll start revenging. But he able to finally take out the Kamun, which leaves Sierra and everybody else susceptible now. And down goes the revenge proc here. Is he going to be able to remove the r immunity? He does get it done. And this is not looking good for Popo Panda. This is leaving him pretty much in a game over situation as it stands because that Sierra is going to be able to make quick work of it come this next turn because Oh, he missed the bomb. Missed the he spoke too soon. You jinxed it, Clay. Missed the bomb. Although, I still think he's he's yeah he's got this one in the bag. Just a little excitement at the end. Sierra there. didn't get the glory like he thought she might. She, she always didn't. does. She always does, and not this time. Maybe. Wait, Wait a second. Get it. Oh, oh, she gets the final turn. We do see Sierra. She's like, nope, this is my game, and I'm gonna take this last final hit. We stand corrected. And Asian Republic talked about the Kamun being his favorite character. You saw. Panda zeroing in on it. Interestingly enough, his favorite character, the Fenyang, banned out by Asian Republic. Could have been a different matchup if, if the uh, Panda was still in there. Definitely. I think it could be. Anytime you have Fenyang, that's one of the most strong monsters in RTA, and it's always an option to ban. <laughs> pretty much no matter what team you bring, it's always an option to ban because you can always be countered by it pretty easily. Yeah, or just draft the, uh, the Panda yourself if you have the opportunity right off the top. I mean, it's such a strong pick, such a strong unit. Definitely now, what kind of adjustments, by the way, do you make if you're Panda? Based on the ban that obviously Asian Republic made on the, on the uh, Feng Yan last time, do you, do you switch things up? I would say switch things up a little bit. I would definitely respect the Kamun a little bit more than maybe Popo Panda gave him in the first game here. Right. So 
I don't know. What do you think, Childish? I don't know. Whether, if, he, if he knows that he's going to be using that Camus, maybe he tries to draft in there uh, to Sarian to try to silence that passive that Camus is going to bring. Uh, you know, Sarian is one of the top monsters that people are going to be using to silence any kind of passive that the opponent brings. So, so far, he does have uh, Popo Pandas landing down the Olivia, Feng Yang, and Wusa once again. Of course, Asia Republic looking a little bit more on the yellow side, bringing not one, but two LD units. We have Julian and Ragdoll here. Julian being the light vampire here. Such an interesting monster considering what he has already laid out, Clay. Gotta love those two monsters. Man, now that it leaves Popa Panda in a tough situation, yeah. who do I ban out? This OP monster or the other OP monster? Or leave them both in and, you know, roll your, roll your dice. I like what Popo Panda is doing right now. He's bringing in Okeanos here. Currently, Asian Republic doesn't have any type of uh, cleanse, or sorry, excuse me, immunity. So, again, unless he has will, um, you know, he's going to be able to take, uh, at least if not land some suns early on, he may potentially just try to reset and uh, try to take a unit out. If you're Asian Republic, why switch things up when things worked as well as they did last time? Because you might be expecting the other player to think that you're going to go with the same thing that works. Um, it's a lot of mind games that, right. that goes into it, of course, but I think Panda answering back with the Tessarian is a really, really good option against those two strong passive monsters that we see between Julianne and Ragdoll. I love what I'm seeing out of Asian Republic, by the way, because you guys know we're so used to a really narrow scope of units. Everybody's got the, you know, the same build-outs, the same comps that they're looking to make, and, and we see a lot of matches that are very similar in scope. Asian Republic really throwing curveballs out there, going with some monsters that we don't typically see, and demonstrating to the people out there streaming that you don't need to always go with the same old song and dance. Yeah, and that's, that's like we talked about earlier in the last match, you know, pulling out different units that not a lot of people have is, it's always a little bit nerve-wracking facing against them if you don't have a lot of experience against them. And look at that, Julianne doing some work right at the start there. Lots of damage into that Okeanos, but we've got to be careful with the Sarian in there. He can make pretty quick work of that Julianne. Definitely. And, and of course, at the very beginning of the match, Okeanos was trying to go for the reset on Hathor, didn't land it in. And of course, Asia Republic capitalizing on it, using the CR to take out Okeanos. Nice job by him. Now it is in favor of Asia Republic. Four monsters to three. And a violent proc. Don't forget about that from the Sierra, which Standard. brings the bomb back up just that much quicker. And I would say he's really got to be. He's, so Asian Republic obviously has the upper hand in this one right now as he stands, but he's really got to be careful because that was a lot of damage coming from that Tassarian. And then he's going to potentially one shot it out with Fang Yan in the next turn, which will leave it down in a situation. But I don't know, here, here comes the here it comes the sleep, and he Ooh. ends up missing Olivia. Olivia probably hanging in there with a ton of resistance, and rightfully so. She's able to cleanse one of the units and research his attack bar completely, so that it can uh, generate a turn and go right after him. So, as you can see right now, he's probably going to go ahead and do it. Does he uh, take off the bomb on himself, or does he uh, cleanse the uh, sleep on Ben Yang? I like the choice there. Obviously, you don't want to lose Olivia, so uh, we got a nice glancing skill on uh, Julian. And now we're kind of waiting to see what he decides to do. Everybody else locked down. Two turns here on a sleep with a stun. I think he has some nice control of the fight. Asian Republic, of course, looking to get a, a stun or something on Olivia, but ends up putting the two debuffs, or the three debuffs, rather, on the two monsters that are already asleep. And here goes a bomb. Just decides to detonate wow. it. And Asian Republic, again, taking complete control here. Could potentially Panda come back in this one, Childish? Well, we never can count out Fengen. We've seen it time and time and again that he can do some work here, but considering the type of control that Asian Republic is bringing with regards to Hathor, and even like Julianne with his second school on a stun, and of course CR on the bomb, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I feel like he, he landed the bomb. It's, it's going to be hard to come back from this one. The violent procs, though, from that Sierra. She might have one more left in her before she finally goes down, but I would still say that between the Julianne still being left in the match and then Tassarian probably going down next turn here. Cool. This one could be in the books. Asian Republic could be moving on to fight Shuffles in the next match. Yeah, notice that even though he has the bomb on uh, Tassarian, he's still working out Tassarian because of uh, Feng Yang's passive. Every time you hit him, he's going to generate a little bit of attack bar. He does not want to give Popo Panda's uh, Wind Panda to go ahead and generate some turns to get those skills back up. Does get a nice violent proc though from Feng Yang to breathe a little bit of life back into his team. and. Might just be, again, a little too little too late, but here comes the revenge procs from Feng Yan. Another one going into the Orion, but Orion just keeps bouncing. Doesn't land a thing, doesn't remove a single buff. 
Oh, and it, we see a solo we here. Got to take this guy out. Stand in, but yeah, Orion just hanging by a sliver, which is extremely crucial. The sleep does not go down. The resistance. Uh -oh. We did get a connection error, but are we gonna get back into the fight before it's over or not? I'll tell you what. This would be pretty good fortune. It's not a foregone conclusion, by the way, that Republic would take this down. As we know, that Wind Panda can come back and solo out, and it looks like there's a decent amount of uh, HP compromised on Asian squad. How great would this be if the Wind Panda was able to come back and get through Asian and level this matchup? I just don't think it's going to be the case. I think that game was pretty much in the bag for Asian Republic. But uh, did we completely... I th I'm lose not sure. We're, we're, we're finding out right now. If we did lose the match, and you, as you say, it was a foregone conclusion that Republic was going to hang on and win, regardless of that panda, that win panda hanging in there, standing tall, this is going to be a little bit of good luck for, uh, for Panda, who's going to get a chance to go back to the drawing board. So are we playing the whole match over again? I, or are As we of right now, I don't think that we still stands. have the match. I don't think they're going back into it. Now, as we mentioned earlier, if we do have to go and reset, which I'm just hearing right now in my ear that it is a full reset situation, A, Asian Republic needs to just shrug it off. Don't get irritated. Don't get annoyed. Don't get stressed by the fact that you think you, you were just about to advance. Get right back to the drawing board. But each player is going to have to draft the same units, the same first pick will be awarded, so we're really going to start fresh. But what if that's the case, what if anything is Panda going to be able to do to ensure a different outcome? Well, there was a lot of violent procs there coming was. from that Sierra, which was completely changing the outcome of the match just from that alone. So even though they pick the same monsters, ban the same monsters, and everything's a full-on reset, I still think that Panda could potentially come back still and win this match to get them into this, the, the third round where they can pick all new monsters again. And it's, it's a little bit upsetting, to be completely honest. If I was in uh, Asian Republic situation, knowing that I almost had the game in the bag, that's maybe a message to the other players waiting as well to play it out because you never know what might happen. Yep. It's that 33.6 dial-up modem that we got that's just plugging <laughs> along. <laughs> oh... I'll tell you what, though, that, that Sierra and the violent proc that you were talking about, if Panda manages to take that Sierra out, that, was it the, the Tessorian that, that Sierra took out early? That, uh, the Tessarian? The, yeah. It was, right away, it right was off the top? Okeanos. Okeanos, that's right. First one that he took down was Okeanos, which that one as well, a very, very crucial monster for Panda's team. And it, wor it, it worked. Okay, so now I'm getting an update that the match was actually played out. We lost our connection to be able to bring you the rest of that match, but it looks as though Popo Panda wow. came back. Unbelievable. That win Panda standing tall. As we mentioned, one of the few units you can bank on wow. to solo out if things set themselves up just right. And so now we're going to a game three. How could we not have seen that? I want that. Brutal, right? right? I would need the replay. I need the replay. I want to see that. Picks or it didn't happen. Yeah. That's what I that would have been the most viral video ever right there. Oh, that's okay. We'll get the exciting finish here as they head into game three now. And, man, that win panda. Like we said, don't count it out just yet. And don't count it out. All it those was, resistances and it was too else. car. It was too much carnage. We couldn't bring it to you. It was banned. It was, <laughs> we, had to, we had to censor it. It was just too ugly what happened there. So, interestingly enough, it's, it's totally legit on the square. Panda ended up winning. We just didn't bring it to you. We're as disappointed here at the desk as you are at home not to have had an opportunity to stream that. But Asian Republic needs to realize that that win Panda, which is Popo's favorite character, is the type that is lethal. And could he go back to banning it this time around to prevent a situation like the one he encountered there? Granted, with a different team that he fielded. Sure. Could be, or, I mean, it could have just been a couple different choices and turns and which monster he's focusing first, maybe throw a couple bombs on the uh, Wind Panda, which is, it's hard with the second skill cleansing itself, right. but taking advantage of when it's not up to throw some bombs on the Wind Panda to take it out early. There was a little bit of RNG that came into play to allow the Wind Panda to come through. Obviously, Hathor missing late. Right. That was an issue. Yeah. RNG is always a part of the game, no matter what you look at it, Phil. There we go. We are underway. It looks like Popo Panda does get the first turn taken away. The Wusa. Now we have Asian Republic answering back with the same two monsters he picked in game one, getting the CR Orion combination. Of course, Popo Panda picking the same strategy, Olivia and Feng Yang. That's what brought him the win in the 
game number two. Of course, now we have coming back once again Ragdoll and maybe the We're Julian. See the Kamoon again. Kamoon. Ah, he no. Sneak it in the. Perna instead. The Perna. And I, I like that choice there. Tons of damage, providing the passive heal. Um, he needs to be able to reset it, which right now Popo Panda has not locked down uh, to Sarian. Would he bring it in considering what we have? No, he goes for the Okeanos, Clay. Yeah, interesting pick going back to the Okeanos, but again, everything's changing up from Asian Republic side. So to have that skill reset from Okeanos mm -hmm. to be able to take down Perna just one time and not have it revive, I think it's a smart choice from Popo Panda. Uh, but Asian Republic, pretty much the same build overall, except for that Perna. So we'll see if he does the same monster at the very end. And if we haven't already made mention of it, the first pick in the first game at random. The second game, the first pick goes to the other player, and in the third game, we coin toss. Is that right, Clay? Yep, the third game is a coin toss that's done behind the scenes. All right. So, it's as so that ensures as it, nobody gets the first pick every time. Every single Correct. time, you got it. So it is as even as possible. So it looks like Popo did win the coin toss to be able to take that Wusa first. Not really a whole lot of changes between either two sides, but uh, still, either way, they do get the first turn here. And Notice the Feng Yan not in the building. <laughs> Feng Yan did get banned out, absolutely. And a smart choice from Asian, Asian Republic for sure. Yeah, all right, it looks like we're off here. Now we have the Spear of Redation landing on Perna, getting it down. So it looks like that's going to be the focus on. I like the choice on that, considering that he has paired Okeanos with Chao. Chao having the elemental advantage on Perna. This should bring some damage numbers to this team. Sierra missing the bomb on Olivia, leaving it to stand another day. But here comes the violent procs from Sierra. Boom. And able to take it down just like that. That's why Perna is one of the stronger monsters here on Asian Republic's team. But he's got that child that can take it out here in the next couple turns. Able to land three stuns on the, on his team. And if he can get that Chao in before the Kamun, I don't think he's going to be able to. Uh, so that Kamun is going to give the shield up to Perna. But this one's moving wow. really, really quickly. Yeah. Asian Republic oh. making quick work of two monsters already. And then Chao unable to break through that shield from Kamun. How vital is the loss of that Okeanos for Popo? Uh, definitely a strong thing, considering that Asian Republic doesn't have any kind of immunity right now. He really needs that stun, the, the reset on both uh, Sierra and Perna. Uh, I like the choice of going after that right away, and it looks like it's paying off here. Yeah, and getting that stun onto Chao along with the defense break. There's not much that Chao can do against uh, a violent proc in Sierra. There we go. It looks like it's trying to work down that Perna. Or correction, working down that Wusa here. Orion getting some additional turns, despite the fact that they made the recent change on Season 2, limiting to the additional turns. His first skill is able to take it out. Now Kamun finishes off that Wusa. It is in now sitting here four monsters to one. I don't know what Popo Panda can do. There's not much, but you can see the excitement in Asian Republic right now. Very, very animated. One of the more animated players that we've seen so far in this tournament. And he's got every right to be because it looks like this one is in the books with Sierra again taking all the glory for this game three. Yep, a clean sweep, no loss of units whatsoever as Asian Republic comes back after dropping that disappointing second game to win the third game and punch his ticket into the final match. Sierra with the violent proc dropping bombs. That's just not a good recipe to be up against, no doubt about it, guys. Any surprises out of that uh, matchup? I would Go ahead. The Kamun. I have to yeah, say the yeah. Kamun. That was a really interesting part. And then, of course, uh, he put it on the violent set. One of the things that people don't consider, his second skill, doing tons of damage when the opponent has the low health, having the violent set, being able to do, uh, you know, get those violent props, he's going to be able to get a ton of damage from getting the uh, skills to recycle. Has more utility than just Correct. being there for the shield. It, it's Great able play. to kind of bruiser it out a little bit more than what you would normally see from a typical Kamun. So. Yep. To everybody watching out there, another way to build uh, a different unique monster for RTA that you don't normally see. And we've got a unique little monster standing by with Asian Republic, the winner of that match. It's our Maria Ho. Maria. So some people seem to be a little bit nervous. You seem to be really excited, and you were kind of using the audience to get a little bit hyped. So do you feel like that was a part of your strategy, maybe? Uh, I mean, the thing is, Popo's my guildmate, and I really have high respects for all my guildmates, and I didn't take the match, like, I didn't take the match for granted, like, I always considered the options that my guildmate has, and I'm going to look forward to facing shuffles in the quarterfinals. Okay, so what is your strategy going into the quarters? You knew that you were going to be up against a tough opponent no matter who won. 
Uh, honestly, I'm just going to keep on picking unorthodox picks. I'm just going to show everyone that you don't just need to keep on picking your Ganymedes, your Molongs, and all that stuff. You can use other stuff to rise in uh, the ranks, and I think I proved it right here. All right, well, congratulations. We loved watching you play up there. We'll see you in a bit. Thank Back to you, Ali. Wow.